Hi there, this is Ed Herzog from ElementorServices.com and today I'm going to show you how to create a transparent header in Elementor. Now, while you can create a transparent header with the free version of Elementor, depending on the theme that you're using, you'll have a lot more options and flexibility for your transparent header if you create it with Elementor Pro. Now, if you don't already have Elementor Pro and you want to upgrade, there will be a link in the video description below. And by the way, when you buy Elementor Pro via my affiliate link, I receive a small commission which helps keep this channel alive. Now let's take a look at how to create a transparent header using Elementor Pro. So here I am on the Elementor Services website and you see here I have just a regular header across here. What I want to do is turn that into a transparent header that will appear down here within the first section of my website. Now I may or may not keep my transparent header after I've created it, but I just want to use this here as the way to demonstrate to you how to create a transparent header for your website. So looking at this page here, the first thing I want to do is I want to create more space here because as you see, there's not a lot of space. And when I bring this header down into the space here, it's going to bunch up against this header. So let me come in, in here into the section settings, come to advanced. And you see, I've got 150 pixels padding on top and bottom. Let me change that to 200. And go ahead and update it. So now I should have enough space for this header to come down here. And so it's not, you know, the header won't be bunched up against that heading right there. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to start editing this header. Now, in theory, I can click right here on edit header and edit it right on the page. But I've played around with this and I've found that it's actually a little tricky to do to create a transparent header right within the page. It's much easier to do if you use the Elementor theme builder. And this will also help those who already, you know, who don't have their header set up already. You can see the process from the very beginning. So let me come over here and I will come to templates and click on theme builder. And then I'll go into the new theme builder. Now, if you don't already have a, have a header set up, you can click here on header or right there on add new and create your header. But if you're like me and you already have your header set up, you can just click right there and then click here on edit. Now, what I want to do now is I want to turn these things here that are black, I want to turn them white. And I also want to turn, you see this purple color, when I hover, hover over the different parts of my navigation menu, it's a purple color that's the same as this purple color here. I obviously want to change that because that won't show up. Uh, and so I'm going to go through and do that. I'm not sure yet about these here, how they'll look. I'll leave them as they are and we'll take a look later as to whether or not I need to adjust the drop down menus. And the same thing here with the, with the YouTube logo. That may look okay the way it is or I may want to tweak it. But let's go ahead right now and make all these white. And this here is just a heading widget. I'm not big on logos, so I always just use a heading widget. So this is pretty easy to do. Just come in here to style, go to text color and make that white and come over here and come into style, make this white, and then that hover color, make that white as well. And this border here is coming from the column, so we'll come over there and come into style, go to border, and again, make that white. Now, the one thing you're seeing here is that, you know, now you can't see any of these elements. If you want to, you can come in into your section settings and temporarily give, sorry, come over here to style and temporarily put a color on the background so you can see, you know, see that everything is showing up properly. So now what I want to do is I want to keep editing some things here within the section. So first I'm going to come to advanced and you see I have this padding of 25 at the top and bottom. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And instead of this padding here, what I'm going to do is come over here to layout and give this a minimum height. Uh, let's actually make that 100. Bigger numbers are better because it'll give you more space at the top. If you have a small number, this uh, your heading is going to bunch up against the very top of your screen. So I'm going to go with 100. Then I'm going to come here to advanced and I'm going to give this a Z index. Now, what the Z index does is that it determines when you have items on your website that overlap one another, the higher Z index number goes on top of the element with a lower Z index number. So for example, I want to give this a higher number than this section here. So that that way the header will be on top of the section here. Now, in this case, I already know this section does not have a Z index on it. So I can put any number I want here for the Z index for the header, but just to be safe, you know, if you're not sure, just enter a really big number, we'll put 100 in there. And the next thing I want to do is I want to give this a, 
negative margin. I want to give it the same negative margin as what I set for the minimum height. So this is a 100 pixels. So I'm going to give this here a negative margin of 100. And make sure that right there, I do not, as you see here, I do not have these numbers linked together. But if they are linked together, make sure to click on that to link them. Otherwise, you'll have a negative top margin and a negative bottom margin, which you obviously don't want. So uh, go ahead and put negative 100 right there. And then I'm going to turn off that background color. So I'll come over here and just turn that off right there and go ahead and update it. And let's take a look at how that looks. It should all be set up now. Perfect. There you go. I now have a transparent header set up on my Elementor website. It was very, very easy to do, but there are still some tweaks I want to make. As you remember, I turned off the hover effect because it was that same purple that we're seeing here. So I want to give this a hover effect. So I'm going to come back over here and go into the nav menu and come over here to contents and make the pointer a background pointer and come over here to style go to hover and make that white and go ahead and update it and come over here and update this Yeah, I think it looks a lot better with that background hover effect than without any sort of a hover effect. And as you see here, you know, I said I was going to take a look at how these look. I think that looks fine. I don't think I really need to make any tweaks to this drop down menu. I think those look fine. Um, I'm also OK with this red here on the purple, the red uh, YouTube logo or the red YouTube color on the purple there. So that's it. You know, in theory, I finished. But as you may know, there's one very, very, very important step that we still need to do, which is to set this up for responses to set it up for both mobile and tablet because, you know, tablet doesn't get a lot of traffic, but it does get some, but mobile, obviously cell phones bring in a lot of traffic. So we need to make sure that our transparent menu looks nice on both mobile and tablet as well. So that's what we're going to do next. So here I am back in the header template within the Elementor theme builder. And let me go ahead and turn on responsive mode. So I'll click there and let's do tablet first. And I'm going to give this the background color again, just temporarily so I can see what I'm doing. Great. Okay. So the basic layout there looks fine, but let me make sure that I still have the correct settings here. So you see here, I don't because I have this padding here. So I need to get rid of that. I do have the Z index. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it does say 100. So that got filtered down from the desktop version. I come over here. I do indeed have the minimum height of 100 pixels, but I don't see the negative margin. So I'm going to need to put that back in. So let me do that. Oops, looks like I have these values linked together. So let me delink those, turn that back to zero and add the negative sign in right there and go ahead and update this. And we'll take a look at how that looks on tablet. Oops, kind of got to get rid of that background color as well. So uh, come over here and turn that off and update it. And now we'll take a look and see how it looks on mobile or on tablet. So let me come over here and click on edit page and then edit with Elementor and then click on responsive mode and take a look at this on tablet. So it's set up fine in terms of the transparent header. I will need to later go in and tweak the font size here because this is, it looked fine over here. They were all in, as you see there, it's all in one line but for some reason here on the display, it's not uh, displaying all in one line. So I'll have to perhaps uh, make the font size for those uh, nav menu items a little smaller, but at least in terms of being set up on a tablet as a transparent header, that looks fine. So now we'll take a look at this on mobile. So let me come over here into mobile and go ahead. I'm going to turn the background color on so I can see what I'm doing. So one thing you're seeing here is that on mobile, you know, these items obviously go vertically as opposed to horizontally. And so, and particularly because I have a fairly large logo here, uh, I'm going to put this, I'm going to leave this at the top and then put these two in one row down here. Now, depending on the size of your logo and you know what else you have on your header, you may be able to fit everything in one row. But at least in my case, I think it's going to look better if I do this in terms of two rows. So the logo up there and these two uh, right down there. So the first thing I want to do is I want to come here to the column settings and the default column width on, on mobile is 100%. I'm going to change that to 50. And then do the same for this here. Okay, so now I have these both right here uh, and they're both centered. I may want to play with that a little bit and 
me see if I have anything there that is impacting where those show up. I do not. So there's no padding or anything there in terms of the columns. And in terms of these two widgets, they both look centered within their column. I think that may be pretty good right there. Again, uh, once I'm done with this tutorial, I may play around with it a little bit, but I think, you know, that's probably the best I can do in terms of the setup. I may make that a little smaller, actually, because that's a little big relative to that right there. So let me come here and change the size to 24. Yeah, that looks better. I think that actually looks a lot better now uh, in terms of size with those two being roughly the same size now. So next thing I want to do is I want to make this hamburger menu white, both the regular view as well as the hover view. So I'll come over here, go to style, come down here, go to the toggle button, make that white, and come here and make this white as well. And let me take a look at how that looks when I click on it. I think that looks good. Again, it looked fine on the desktop version with this particular, with that drop down menu. I think that'll look fine as well for the mobile version. Uh, so that is set. Now we need to go into the section settings and make some adjustments to some of those. So let me come up here to the section settings and click on that. And again, let's get rid of this padding. The Z index already is set at 100. Come over here. And here you see I have a minimum height already set at 160. I wanna make that a little smaller because that's creating this gap here. So let's make that 120. That looks better. And then come here and give this a negative margin of 120. And go ahead and update that. And then get rid of that background color and update it again. And let's take a look and see how that looks on mobile. So let me come over here and go into pages and come down to my home page and edit with Elementor and take a look at how this looks in mobile. So click on responsive mode and then mobile. So that's how my transparent header looks on mobile. I think in general, this looks okay. I think as I'm looking at this, one thing I may do later is I may actually bring these two closer together. Now again, mine here for mobile is a little trickier because I have such a big logo. I can't fit everything in one row. If you can fit everything in one row, I think it'll actually look a lot better than what mine looks. And as I'm looking at, you know, the other thing I could do here is I could just get rid of this right here. You know, this isn't really necessary. I could move this over uh, to the left-hand side and then bring this up over here. Uh, you know, that'd be another option I could do. You know, you can, again, you can do it in two rows as I have here. I think it is better if you have the space, you know, again, depending on what items you have or want in your header, if you can do it all, all in one row for the mobile version, I think that will actually look a bit better. So that is how you create a transparent header for Elementor. One thing I will say, if you run into any issues, make sure that you go into your theme settings and see if it's something within your theme settings that is causing you problems. That was actually something I had to do. I ran into some issues and after a lot of investigation, it turned out that there were some settings within my theme that I had to basically deactivate in order to get this to work. So, uh, you know, make sure if you run into any issues that you look at your theme settings as a possible solution to whatever problems you're having. So I hope you found this tutorial valuable. Again, if you do decide to upgrade to Elementor Pro, I do appreciate it if you do, do so through my affiliate link, which will be in the video description below. And also make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be doing one or two Elementor videos uh, for the foreseeable future. I mean, this channel is called All Things Elementor. So, you know, anything I do will be based on Elementor. And again, I'm hoping to do one or two videos a week. So that's it. Hope you have a great day and hope to hear from you soon. Bye.